In this lesson, we're going to model data with a line of best fit. I'm going to show you all the calculator steps as well as um, doing some theory behind where this is coming from. So we'll do some by hand and some with a calculator. So a scatter plot is what we're going to start with for all of our graphs. It's a set of points on a grid used to visualize the relationship or possible trend in the data. So we collect data and then we get all of those data points specifically put on there. I've got one down below here. And this scatter plot compares students' absences from math class with the grade they obtained in the course. You can see we've got a title, we've got our x and y axis labeled. As well, we have a nice scale used for our x axis and our y axis. That's the expectation when you're drawing a graph. Also, it's important to understand that your x axis represents your independent variable, whereas your y axis is your dependent. So, what does that mean? Well, in this case, your grade is the independent, but your absences are dependent upon what's going on with your grade. Okay? Describe the characteristics of a polynomial function that might be used to model data in a scatter plot. So, when we're looking at these graphs, that's what we're doing. We're getting a picture, a general picture of what's going on. On the side here, communication tip. The independent variable is the variable that's being manipulated. The dependent variable is the variable that's being observed. The independent variable is always placed on the horizontal axis of the graph. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're deciding what's going on the bottom of your graph and what's going on the side. In example one, it says use a clear ruler to help you draw the line of best fit. Then estimate the slope and y-intercept for that line of best fit. When you're drawing a line of best fit, often a lot of students make sure it goes through the zero point, but that's not always the case. When you're drawing a line of best fit, it's the average of all of the points drawn there. We're getting the general trend of what's going on. So I've used my clear ruler, I put it on my graph, and I adjusted it and moved it around to see when it's going to go through this, these data points the best. How is it going to go through these data points in the best possible way? Okay. Now it says estimate the slope. Reminder that our slope m is equal to our rise over our run. Okay, so you can do this in a couple different ways. You can mark off where the rise and run are on your graph and just count. You could also use the other formula for slope where it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and then you're finding specific data points and figuring it out that way. Each way it's fine, it doesn't matter which way you want to use it. So I found some nice data points here on my graph. So between 80 and 90 here, I can see that at 85, that's my rise here. So from 70 to 85, so that would be a total of 15 for my rise. And if I go along my run, my run is going from it's about halfway between 10 and 15, so 12 and a half to 20. So that would be seven and a half. So using my rise over my run, that would be rise of 15, run of seven and a half, or a slope of two. Now I did the y2, y1 business in my head, but if you wanted to write that out, so you're looking at the corner point. So this point here, that ordered pair was at x is 20, y was 85. And this ordered pair for where that point was, x is 12 and a half, and y was 70. So if you wanted to do this, y2 minus y1, so that would be 85 minus 70 divided by 20 minus 12 and a half. Just consistent, make sure you're starting with the same point each time and you get the same value of 20. Either way you do that. So the approximate slope is 20. Now y-intercept, your y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So in this case this is approximately is about 45. So my equation becomes, so that's b equals 45, my B equation becomes y equals 2x plus 45. 
Now, if you do this and your answer's off by a bit, that's okay. That's part of drawing a line of best fit through there. It is an approximation, right? All right, let's take a look at B. It says, if your mark on the first test is 60%, it says if, that should say is, what is your expected mark on the second test? Well, using this graph, okay, find 60% for your mark on your first test. That's here. Well, what you're going to do, again, take your straight edge, draw a line up until you see where it hits the graph. So you can see I stopped my vertical line here once it hit that line. Now, from that point, I'm going to draw a horizontal line across to find out where my mark would be on the second test. So you can see here between 60 and 65, this is approximately 62%. So when it asks, what is your expected mark on the second test? 62%. Now, the next question is, is this interpolation or extrapolation? Well, if we go back to our definitions here, Interpolation, the process used to estimate a value with the domain of a set of data based on a trend. So this is within given data. Extrapolation, the process used to estimate values outside the domain of a set of data based on a trend. So that's outside given data. Usually means you've extended the line beyond the data given to us. So if we look here, well, we're on the red line. We're on the line that was given to us. We haven't gone beyond it. So this would be interpolation. In part C, we're given data here again. We've got income on our y-axis and years of experience on our x-axis. And it says if you have 35 years of experience, what is your approximate income? Is this interpolation or extrapolation? So 35 years of experience, that's on the x-axis, that's independent, that's right here. And again, you're going to draw a line up till you hit the data along the line. Now you see they've drawn a line of best fit through the scatter plot, but that line of best fit doesn't reach 35 years. So what we're going to have to do is take our straight edge and extend that line. Now it's very, very important that when you extend that line that your ruler is sitting along the original line and that you're using the same slope. You're not changing the line, you're not changing the direction, you're just extending, extending it with the same rise and run. Now that we have that, we can use our ruler the same way we did in the previous example to find out and estimate what we need at 35 years. So you're going to draw a vertical line up at 35 and draw a line, horizontal line across to read off the graph. So now you can see if we read off the graph here, that's approximately $74. $74. Okay, now that's not $74. They haven't told us what this income, I'm assuming this is in the thousands of dollars. So $74,000. But um, when we're reading it off the side here, they haven't given us um, the units that they're measuring in. So I just put dollars, but I'm assuming there's three zeros after that. Okay, is this interpolation or extrapolation? Well, because we had to extend the data, this is considered extrapolation. For the next example, I'm going to show you how to do this using your graphing calculator. So the next two pages goes through the steps. I'm also going to go through the steps with you with my graphing calculator. Uh, so make sure you have that out so you can practice with me. Let's take a look at the next example. All right, so I have my graphing calculator out. In order to put in any data, we're going to be using the stat function. So if you go to stat, you get this menu. Then you go to edit, which is number one, and you'll get this. It should say L1, L2, L3. If it does it, go back to stat and hit number five, setup calculator, and hit enter. And it'll reset those to one, two, and three. The other thing you might want to do is if there's lots of data in there, you can go to number four and clear list, or if you go back into edit, if you have some data in here, you just have to go to the top of the list and hit clear, enter. If you go to the top of the list and you hit delete, 
which sometimes people do, you've deleted your list. You no longer have a list one. So don't hit delete, delete, hit clear. How do I get that list back? Stat, number five, setup editor, enter. It's a common thing. Students do it all the time. And now my list one is back. Now that we know how to get into this menu, let's take a look at our example. So example two says, the one hour record is the farthest distance traveled by bicycle in one hour. The table below shows the world record distances and the dates they were accomplished. So we've got year and we've got distance. So our first um, decision we need to make is what is my x or my independent variable and what is my y my dependent variable so here our independent variable is the year so i'm going to put iv here and my dependent variable d oops that's not a d the dependent variable is my distance your independent variable goes into l1 list one and your distance or your dependent variable is going to go into list two so now our job is to put all of list 1 and all of list 2 into our graphing calculator. How do you do that? Well, 1996, enter. And I'm going to do that each time. So I'll give you a moment to go through and put in all of your data. Once you're done that, go into L2, and you're going to put 78.04, enter, and then 79.14, and so on. So go ahead and put all of that data into your calculator. So at this point, you should have all of your data put into your graphing calculator. Now we have to do something with it. So if we go back to the question, it says use technology to create a scatter plot and to determine the equation of the line of best fit. So how do we do that? So first thing you're going to do is go ahead and press second y equals, and you're going to get another menu here. And this is how we turn our plots on. So we're going to turn the first plot on by hitting enter and hitting on. Now, how do you know if your plot's on? You can see at the top, plot one is highlighted. And you wanna make sure that the type you have is the one that I have highlighted down here. If you go here to the scatter plot and you're plotting line one and line two. Now your menu might look a little different, but you're doing the same thing. Once you've done all of that, you go to zoom and you're gonna choose nine. Now you could just hit the number nine, but if you want to see what that is, zoom nine is the zoom stat. And it's looking at all of your lists and graphing that. So at this point, your graph should look something like this with all of your data points in there as a scatter plot. So that's the first part. Your scatter plot is done. Now if you click on y equals, if you ever have something in here, clear that out and you can see plot one is highlighted. You don't want anything in there because that would also show up on your graph. So I'm going to go back to zoom 9, get back to my scatter plot. At this point we want to draw our line of best fit through there. Okay, so you're going to go to stat, then calc, so arrow over to calc, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, regression functions in here. And we're going to be doing a linear regression, so we're going to go down to 4, and you can see it's linreg, four and then enter. So here y equals ax plus b where your a value is given to you and your b value is given to you. What do we do at this point? At this point we're going to put this into our calculator so it draws our line of best fit. So go into that y equals menu and we want to paste that function and the way you do that in this calculator you click on vars and then five, which is statistics. Once you get into here, you're gonna to go to equation. So arrow over to equation. And then the first one is your regression equation, so one. And it's taken that equation that we found earlier and pasted that in. At this point, you can hit graph or trace and it'll draw your line of best fit through. Let's go back to our notes and reread what it is exactly that we're looking for here. So A says use technology to create a scatter plot, determine the equation of the line of best fit. So looking at our calculator, we can see that the line of best fit, that equation was y equals 0 0.5, I'm just rounding here, 5, not 5, 0 0.858, 
x, because that was the a value, and then it was a negative b value, so instead of writing plus a negative value, I'm just going to put minus 1,635. 0.732. And that's right from my calculator there. Okay. Now for A, if you want, you can draw a little sketch just so you have an idea of what we're looking at here. And I'm just graphing it in this quadrant where my year was on the bottom, distance was on the side, and you've got this oops, scatter plot of values as we went through, right? Now for B, really didn't have to do the graph part, but it's just to give you an idea of what's happening here. And you can see as the year increases, the distance also increases. So the important part was being able to put that in our calculator and getting the equation. For B, it says interpolate, so using the data that we have to estimate, a possible world record distance for the year 2006. And if you see here, it goes 2002, 2003, 2004. There is no 2005 or 6 and then 789. So a possible world record for 2006 to the nearest hundredth of a kilometer. So going back to our graphing calculator, how would we do that? Well, we can use the trace feature going in there. We're given a distance, right? If I go back here, they're giving us um, 2006, sorry, and we're wanting to find the distance. So for B, we're given x is equal to 2006 and we're going to go into the trace function and set our value of x equals to 2006 to find the corresponding y value. So second trace we're wanting to find value 1 and setting x equal to 2006 enter it gives us a corresponding y value of 86.3786 and they said to the nearest hundredth so 86.38 kilometers would be the answer there. So we did trace and then we did value and we got y is equal to 86.38 kilometers. For C Compare your estimate with the actual world record distance of 85.99 kilometers in 2006. So we're really seeing that just because you're using your calculator to find an estimate doesn't mean that that's the actual value. That's an estimate. So if we look at our value of 86.38 and subtract it from their value, the actual value of 85.99, we can see that there's a difference of 0.39 kilometers. So overall, given a set of data, being able to put that in our calculators, find the line of best fit. From there, you can figure out what the equation of that line is, and then we can interpolate and extrapolate from there. Let's try example three. Example three says Matt buys t-shirts from a company that prints art on t-shirts and then resells them. When buying the t-shirts, the price Matt must pay is related to the size of the order. Five of Matt's past orders are listed in the table below. So let's try another one of these. It says Matt has misplaced the information from his supplier about the price discounts on bulk orders. He would like to get the price per shirt below $1.50 on his next order. Use technology to create a scatter plot. Determine an equation for the linear regression function that models the data. So let's go ahead and do that. Our first decision, what goes into L1 and what goes into L2? Well, the cost per shirt depends on the number of shirts that we're buying. So the number of shirts is going to be L1 and the cost per shirt is going to be L2. Now, because we have data in our calculator already, we're going to clear all of this out. If I go back in here, clear out what's in Y equals, go to my stat, and I've got stuff in here. So I'm going to go up to 2, hit clear, enter, go up to 1, hit clear, and enter, and start putting that data in. So go ahead and do that and see if you can get your, your calculator to graph what you need to, to graph without me going through it step by step. And then hit play and see if you did that right. Once you have all your data in here, you're going to click on zoom 9. 
and that'll give us our data points. Now you can see our data points are going in a different direction now. That's okay. That just is telling us that as we buy more shirts, the price per shirt is going to decrease, which is how a sale works. So that's good. So now, how do we get that regression equation? So we go into stat, calc, it's a linear regression, so 4, enter. And there's our new equation. So it's y equals negative 0.0065x plus 6.5. We can go ahead and put that in our notes now. Five. Okay, so that's A. Now B says, what do the slope and y-intercept of the equation of a linear regression function represent in this context? Well, that's a good question. So our y-intercept is equal to 6.5. Well, if we're dealing with cost, that would mean that for zero shirts, if we didn't buy any shirts, they would still charge us a starting cost of $6.50. Now our slope is equal to negative 0 0.00, that's not a zero, 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 six, five. Well, What does that mean? Well, that means that's the price per shirt, the price drop per shirt. So if we put a dollar sign in front of there, for however many shirts you buy, each shirt will cost 0 0.0065 dollars less for each one. For C, it says use linear regression function to extrapolate the size of the order necessary to achieve a price of $1.50 per shirt. Now they're saying extrapolate because we don't have that data, right? Matt misplaced this data, so we need to extrapolate and extend our data so that we can see that. Well, all we have so far is our equation, so let's go back to our graphing calculator and draw in this line. So I've got that here. How do we paste that in? Well, we go to y equals now, vars, 5, equation, enter. That's in there. Hit trace or graph, and that's going to be drawn in. Now, one thing that I caution you is the window, especially when you're extrapolating and going beyond, isn't always set for us to find the data that we're looking for. So $1.50 per shirt, if we look at the window, is that in here? So our x min, our y min, here we go. Our y min is a dollar nine, and our y max is five dollars and seventy nine. So hopefully that's in there. So how do we do that? We're not given. If we go back here, we're not given an x value like before. We're given a y value, right? Because when we're graphing here, our price per shirt is on the side, and the number of shirts. Okay, this is price per shirt, is on the bottom. So we're actually given a y value. So for C, given y is equal to $1.50, we're going to graph this, which is going to be a horizontal line, and then find the point of intersection. And we do that by going second, trace, five. Okay, let's do this. So we've got this in here under trace. We've got our, our line of best fit drawn in there. Now we go into y equals and go to y2 and put in that dollar fifty, and hit trace. So you can see there's a horizontal line that's drawn there. And that point where that horizontal line meets our line of best fit, that point of intersection will give us the corresponding x value, how many shirts we need to buy. Second, trace, five. First curve, yes. Second curve, yes. Guess, hit enter again. And it's giving us that if we want to pay $1.50 per shirt, we need to buy 769.23 shirts, which would mean 770 shirts. So we found that corresponding x value to be 
0.23, which means 770 shirts will cost $1.50 each. So now you know how to find uh, the y value given in x, and in this case, how to find the x value given in the y value, how to interpolate and how to extrapolate. Thanks for joining me in today's lesson.